All right, guys, today we're going to talk about some super, super slicey knives. Now, these are some of the sliciest knives in my collection, and arguably I have many different EDC knives, not only because I love to collect EDC knives, if you guys haven't already been able to tell, but also, too, I think there's multiple different knives in the collection that I use in different ways and for different purposes. Some are a little bit more industrious. Some are a little bit um, less industrious. I guess you can't be as rough on them, but undoubtedly, I have some really, really great slicing knives in my collection. So today I thought I'd go over some of them and really go over some of the um, more unusual or untraditional ones. Of course, something like this Paramilitary 2 by Spyderco is a knife that you guys probably already know about and isn't like really super special, really unique um, in that regard. I mean, lots of people know about them. Another one that would be a really great case of this is the Benchmade Bug Out. And I don't necessarily hate the Benchmade bug out. I'm definitely not the largest fan of it, but undoubtedly in a list of super slicey knives, the bug out and the paramilitary two have to be there because they are truthfully very slicey. But let's talk about some ones that you probably aren't as well aware of. So the first one up is going to be one that you've probably heard of, but maybe not this exact style or type. So this first one up is the Ontario Knife Company or OKC uh, Rat Model 1. Now this one, as you guys could probably already tell by its very large stamping, is a red G10 model with CPM S35VN. And I think that this is a knife that really already is very slicey because it is a full flat grind much like many of the other knives I'm going to show here. Um, so you do get some really good slicing performance, but the CPM S35VN I think really bumps this knife up into a higher tier of performance and once again giving you a really excellent level of corrosion resistance while still keeping a lot of good performance with it. I mean this is a steel that... <clears throat> I mean, for instance, just as example, or just as an example, um, my Sabenza 21 is in the same steel as this. So it's kind of crazy to think a sub $100 knife can have some really good performance to it. So those are probably the ones that you'd be most familiar with. Now let's jump into a few that you're probably not as familiar with. First one up is the one that Arguably, I kind of decided to make this video for this knife, and this is the TRM Neutron 2. And this guy is the epitome of a super thin, super slicey blade. Once again, this one's essentially a full flat grind, and I have a really good um, mirror polished edge on it. And I know some people, you know, honestly, they don't really love the mirror polished edges. And like I've said with this one, you know, for me, if it's a super slicey knife, if it's something like this application, like I'm not going to put a mirror polish on my bushcrafting and survival knives because it's unnecessary and it runs a risk of those blades getting damaged. But with something that's legitimately going to be used to cut like boxes and stuff, you know, generally five material this it makes a lot of sense to me and so I do prefer to have mirror edges on my more slicey knife all right next one up is going to be the big brother to the TRM Neutron and that is the TRM Atom now this is the Atom V2 as you guys can see here and essentially this really is basically a TRM Neutron just bigger so you guys can see here these are two different uh, generations so this one is a newer generation so it looks a little different but you guys can see same basic blade shape, same blade thickness, same blade grind. Um, once again, the opening or the thumb stud on the uh, Atom's a little bit bigger, but that's because it's a newer generation. So it's just some generational changes there. But anyways, so the TRM Atom is another knife that I really, really like because it shares so many of the properties of being a super slicey utility knife that the TRM Neutron has. The other thing I like about it is that the same basic blade shape, handle shape carries over. But the nice thing is because this is bigger, you actually have a proper finger choil here. Now it's not the most pronounced, but you can easily put your finger right there and get right up on that blade. And for those who don't know, uh, I love my forward finger choils. I am pre preferential to them, but yeah, so this thing, super nice action and uh, super, super slicey. And like I said, I mean, it's a, a very thin, basically full flat ground 20 CV blade. 
All right, next two up are actually Axis wannabe knives, essentially. So this is the Able Lock by uh, Hogue with their Deca. And the Deca, I mean, if I have a Benchmade bug out on here, I have to throw the Deca on here because this is essentially Hogue's answer to the bug out. So it's very thin, very slicey, and it's overall a super pocket friendly blade. So like I said, this is the Hogue Deca with a Warncliffe uh, blade style. This one is in CPM Magna Cut, but you can get them in CPM 20 CV as well. But overall, these things, I mean, once again, they're super lightweight, super thin, super slicey. They are hard to go wrong with. And they're also pretty reasonably priced. All right, last one up on the list, and I feel like I saved the best for last potentially, but this one's also the last because I feel like this is the highest level of unobtainium, and this is the TRM Shadow. So you guys may or may not be familiar with this knife, um, but this guy is essentially TRM's version of the Axis Lock, and once again, it holds a lot of the same properties as the Atom, as the Neutron, with that same blade stock thickness of... Um, CPM 20 CV, and it also has the added benefit of being an access lock, right? And a very well tuned access lock, I will say. It's, uh, yeah, definitely really nice. I, about the only thing I don't fully love is that um, it really wants you to choke forward up on this choil. Uh, my hands are a little cramped on the back, but the shadow is super comfortable and it has that very nice, not only like thin blade stock, but it has that sweeping belly to it. So very good for like actually, you know, like rocking motions, or I guess I say like rocking style motions. If you were chopping, this would be a good uh, knife um, for like chopping things like food prep. But overall, it has a almost like a wannabe um, kind of worn cliff or reverse tonto, as some people might say. But uh, yeah, I think this thing is very, very purpose driven to be a slicer and a kind of food prep styled knife. But love that action. It is really unbeatable. And yeah, so these are some of the uh, most slicey knives in my collection. And hopefully a good amount of these have been kind of like unusual and traditional. I feel like I try to offer you guys some, some degree of value as opposed to just like show and tell about knives. Um, but once again, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.